Hey there, it's Ben Housel, and today we're going to be having a look at the swish pan effect. Let's go. Don't stop. Don't stop. Don't, don't, don't stop. So essentially, rather than a cut like this, where we're jumping from one clip to the next, but then there's a jump cut, so we're basically moving from the same spot to the other without the movement, we can create a cut like this which uses that rapid movement to make a smooth transition between the frames. So we're tricking the eye into thinking that everything that's moving to the right is in the same shot, or moving to the left, or moving up, or moving down. So it's a really nice, neat trick, which allows us to keep neatly the flow of the video going and uh, keep the movement going nicely. So it allows you to move from one location to another quite quickly. Okay, so let's jump in and get started with Final Cut Pro 10. We're gonna have a look at how we create this cool swish pan effect. So here in Final Cut Pro 10, we're gonna have a look at how we edit a swish pan. Now the key with this is really simple. It's all about getting the timing of the out point of the incoming clip and the in point of the outgoing clip. So those two in and out points that rub up against each other um, exactly right. So we're gonna look at how we do that and how we get the edit to flow and then look at where you might use a, a transition to improve the edit. So we're gonna grab a couple pieces of footage here. And what we're looking for here is for the movement of the first clip out point to, to kind of match the movement of the in point of the, the second clip. So we've got a clip here. I'm just using my favorite shortcuts here in Final Cut Pro 10, the JK and L keys to kind of move forwards and backwards. And we have here a swish pan that moves onto my face here. And we're gonna grab this just as it starts to happen. So I'm gonna mark an in point here okay and pull this down to the timeline and then we need a clip um, before that where the movement is moving in the same direction so we're moving from right to left so the movement is panning around towards my face in this direction so we're looking for a clip here um, that matches that um, for the clip beforehand so we'll just have a look at what we've got here and we can bounce back and forth a little bit but um, so this clip here is moving in the wrong direction. So we'll scroll down here and have a look at what we've got. So we've got a clip here, and we've got a nice movement up from that shadow up here, so we can use this to transition from one clip to the next. So I'm gonna to come to just after this movement has ended. So we're coming up to the left there, and we're gonna mark an out point around about here, and then pop this before this clip. So now we'll play through, and you can see we have the shadow, and then we're walking and at the moment there's a real big jump between those two clips because they're not matched up nicely so the first thing i'm going to do here is just zoom in on the timeline so i'm going to use command and plus to zoom in on my timeline and then just come forward a bit in the timeline so we're a bit closer so we want to catch this transition just as around halfway through this movement up to the left so for this edit um, we're going to drag the out point in here and then we're going to come ahead to just halfway between this in point and move this. Now, we can select the in and out points and nudge them by highlighting them on the timeline with a square bracket. So you can see here, the square brackets to the right P allow me to highlight those in and out points. So I can nudge those then with the left and right triangle brackets or chevrons or whatever you wanna call them, um, just to the right of the M key. So you can see here, I can nudge that in point um, by one frame at a time by using these keys just to the right of the M key on my keyboard. So I'm gonna play this through now. So we'll come back. And you can see now that when we move between those two clips, because the movement is in the same direction, we get this nice flow of the edit. So that's working quite nice. The time is looking pretty good. So we'll keep going through here and we've probably got another one at the end here. So this time, we're panning ahead, so I'm gonna look for about halfway between that. So I'm holding down the K key and just tapping J and L now to move forwards and backwards one frame at a time. And I'm gonna mark an in point here by tapping I and then delete the end of that clip. And then I'm gonna look for another clip that transitions um, in the same direction. So here I'm panning round to the right. And so we're gonna look for a clip that does the same. So here now this clip is panning round to the right. So I'm gonna mark a, an in point partway through this movement. So around about here, and we'll drag this round to the timeline and see how that works. So we're now moving round, 
and obviously with this clip we need to rotate it so I'm going to rotate this um, in the inspector so with my clip highlighted I'm going to bring up the inspector on the top right here so if you don't see the inspector then go to window show in workspace and then inspector make sure that's showing up so we're going to rotate this by 90 degrees okay and then I'm also going to scroll down and turn off this fit option so the spatial conform here which we sometimes get on clips turn that to none and now if we press play you can see that transition is almost working straight off the bat so we're panning around to the right there and I'm going a frame at a time here and it keeps moving about the same rate I think I'm gonna start it off here so those towers are straight into the shot which is gonna pull the eye across and you can see now that move to the right swaps my head out quite nicely to being outside so you can play around with this swish pan really to move yourself from one location to another so essentially the process is to have a swish pan to introduce the clip hold while you're talking or while you're having the camera onto a subject so for instance i've got a couple of clips here where i'm looking at a sign and i'm swishing before and after that uh, sign and then at the end of that clip you swish away in one direction or another and you can try swishing up or down or to the left or to the right um, to get a different effect and then you just need to match that um, either with a clip that's moving in the same direction um, afterwards or a clip that's kind of bouncing back in the opposite direction and you can get some good effects with that um, when you're editing in Final Cut Pro and Premiere Pro whichever application you're using so I'm pretty happy with those um, two quick examples so the other thing you can do um, is if we hover over one of these edit points is we could add a transition. So I'm gonna come across to my transitions on the right hand side here and just add a cross dissolve just to blend those together. And I'm gonna make the cross dissolve quite short. So just a, a few frames long really. And then we'll let that render and then play it through. And you can see it just smooths out the transition there to the point where you hardly even notice it because there's so much movement um, before and after that transition. So we'll try it here too. So we'll drag a cross dissolve on here. I can hold down control and tap D to type in a duration. So I'm gonna make this five frames long. And then we'll just let that render and play through it. And you can see it now becomes quite smooth. Even though the footage isn't that smooth either side, it's a little bit of a shaky, uh, handheld camera um, but you get the idea so we're moving quite nicely between those two clips and the cross dissolve there is helping just to smooth that transition from one to the next so that's a quick introduction to creating a swish pan and how to edit it and think about getting those clips to flow nicely in final cut pro the rest of the work is done in camera and you just need to work on those movements and holds at the beginning and then at the end of your, your clip, thinking about the transitions from one shot to the next. I hope that's been useful. I hope to see you on the next tutorial. And if you have any questions, then leave a comment below.